If you give me four minutes, I will explain to you how UNESCO's freshwater program works. It's called the UNESCO International Hydrological Program, IHP. To understand how it works, you need to know that UNESCO is a member state organization of 195 member states. And 36 of these member states, they form UNESCO's water governing body. It's called the IHP Council. The most important thing that this council does every couple of years is to write a strategy. They need this strategy to address water challenges they have in common, like floods, like droughts, like pollution. And to address these challenges, member states, they need three things. First of all, they need knowledge to understand. They also need data to predict. And, of course, they need coordination. This is the triangle that IHP tries to bring about. The knowledge is generated by UNESCO's water family and in part by the UNESCO IHE Institute for Water Education in Delft. The data are collected and generated in Italy, in Perugia, by the World Water Assessment Program, WAP. Every year, WAP produces the World Water Development Report, which is a flagship report that tells the world what the status of our freshwater resources is. It tells us where the problems are, where the challenges are, and where we need to act. And that is what IHP is about. The coordination is done by the IHP Secretariat, which is mainly located in Paris at UNESCO's headquarters. This secretariat makes it possible that these 195 member states all over the world work together in the field of water. The secretary does this to communicate or by communicating directly to the ambassadors of these countries at UNESCO. These UNESCO ambassadors have offices in Paris. But the secretariat also communicates directly with the water experts in these countries. As a matter of fact, 169 of these countries, they have their own national IHP committee. Now, what is a national IHP committee? It's a committee composed of water experts, like scientists, directors of research institutions, and so on. They have two main qualities. First of all, they're linked to the water sector in their countries. They have a good network. And secondly, very often, they advise their governments in the field of water affairs. And that makes them excellent partners for international water cooperation. These IHP committees are the dots that IHP tries to connect. Now, why is this such a special and useful program? Well, that is because it enables the world of the decision makers, the member states, the politicians, to communicate with the world of the scientists, because these are very different worlds that are sometimes separated, because they speak different languages and sometimes so different that they don't even understand each other. And that is not so strange because they have uh, different challenges. The challenge of the scientists, for example, is that they need to produce knowledge. But the decision makers, they need to do something else. They need to solve problems. But to solve these problems, they need the knowledge produced by the scientists. And that means that they need to understand this knowledge. And that means that this knowledge needs to be presented to them in the way that they can understand it. And the dialogue to do that, that is what IHP tries to produce. It puts the experts, the water experts, and the decision makers around one big table that is located in Paris and that enables them to speak a language they both understand, to design a common research agenda, to address common water challenges like the droughts, the floods, and the pollution, and the other challenges I mentioned earlier. Because water does not stop at borders, and so do the problems. And the only way to overcome them is to address them together. That is what IHP does. I hope you like these explanations, and UNESCO wishes you an excellent day.